This presentation is going to discuss the Ultra Broker, which is the enterprise die commodality workless server offered by UltraRed. A lot of folks have started moving to vendor neutral archiving uh, or have already adopted vendor neutral archiving. And one of the nice things about vendor neutral archive is it reduces the complexity for imaging workflow. You've got all of your images obviously in one large archive and it reduces a lot of the management with having all these different pack systems and all these different imaging systems all over the enterprise. Well, we're trying to do the same thing now with modality work lists. So instead of having all these different modality work list providers all over the organization, instead you can consolidate to one vendor neutral modality work list provider uh, that can provide this information to all of the modalities. This reduces the need for multiple HL7 interfaces. It reduces all of the custom workflows that might be needed. And this is just one of the products UltraRed has that complement the vendor neutral architecture that most uh, sites have been moving towards. UltraRed has been doing this vendor neutral ar architecture for well over 10 years now. We have other products such as Ultra Gateway and our uh, Ultra Gateway Plus, which also do imaging workflow as far as moving images around in a vendor neutral architecture. But in this presentation, I'm going to focus on the Ultra Broker, which is DICOM modality work list. So some of the features for the enterprise modality work list we support, uh, we support processing of HL7 both inbound and outbound, just like an interface engine. It supports web services, so it doesn't have to be HL7. Um, we can support lots of other standards, and uh, web services seems to be one of the emerging standards for exchanging this information for something like modality worklist. I'll show you an example in just a few minutes. So some examples of web services that we have supported in the past are things like XDS, CCR, and CCD, HL7 version 3, and even some proprietary standards that certain vendors implemented. We can support modality perform procedure step at an enterprise level, meaning that modalities can send status messages about studies to us through MPPS, uh, which is the DICOM standard, and we can translate that information and push it downstream to the other information systems so that they know what's going on in the modality. Normally, there is no visibility to what's happening in the modality for information systems on the other side of the broker, but in our case, we can provide that information downstream if it's needed. They could be clustered for high availability. So we have some customers who need up to five nines of uptime because it's an enterprise solution. Uh, obviously, if it's down, you know, you've got a lot of modalities that are unable to get modality work list, which could have uh, effects downstream in the workflow. And modality work list has become rather important to a lot of workflows because of the data integrity issues. So high availability is important and we can cluster to support that kind of high availability requirement for most customers. Customized ICOM modality work list for organizational units and departments. In other words, uh, when, you, when you implement an enterprise-wide broker, you have to support many different departments in many different organizational units. They could be in different locations, and there could be a lot of autonomy that those, um, that those departments and locations have been used to with their current uh, solutions. So you have to continue to support that type of autonomy even in an enterprise solution. So we do have tools that allow you to do that, that allow them to customize the types of information that are returned to those modalities and the formatting of that data and so forth and so on. Our product has baked into it a full HL7 interface engine, just like you would find on many of our competitors' HL7 interface engines that don't have modality work list or where the modality work list is not a core function of the product. So with our product, modality work list is a core function. Interfacing with different standards outside of HL7 is a core piece of our functionality. And we also have a full interface engine which allows HL7 transformations and we have a user interface that would let you do that. Um, so not only can we receive HL7, but we can also route HL7 and convert to all these different standards that I've been talking about, depending on the workflow. We can support multiple departments. In other words, in, in, in most cases, your uh, modality workless server is going to be geared towards cardiology or radiology and so forth and so on, whereas our broker product um, does support all the different types of imaging equipment that you'll find that, does, that supports the DICOM modality workless standards. So radiology, of course, being the most obvious, but then you also can support your cardiology department, gastroenterology, pretty much any uh, department that has imaging equipment could use the Ultra Broker as their DICOM modality workless provider. So you don't have these little broker solutions bolted on to little pack systems throughout the enterprise. Instead, it can be consolidated, just like your vendor neutral archive. Show you a quick example of some of these workflows. Uh, in a typical um, broker workflow for DICOM modality work list, you have some kind of information system that sends HL7 to the broker. The broker stores that information and then provides it when a modality asks for information about an order when they use DICOM modality work list to query the broker. So that's a pretty typical workflow. Other workflows are supported as well. For example, modalities could query the ultra broker 
And we can use what we call just-in-time ordering to go to a different information system using some kind of a web service or SOAP or you know, some other interface mechanism to go out in real time and get the order for that modality so that we're not storing orders on our system. Instead, in real time, we're going out and getting the order information. So it reduces what we call data silos, where you have lots of different databases splattered around the organization. Uh, instead, by using a method like this, we can go out and query other systems so that we're not storing that information. You don't have to worry about drift over time between what we have and what other systems might have. And likewise, uh, we can support through that broker modality perform procedure step, which could use various standards to uh, provide information that we get through MPPS to other systems downstream from us. So, and again, that could be HL7, it could be web services, and so forth and so on. The ultra broker can also aggregate uh, uh, master patient index information. So if we're getting orders and uh, uh, from various different information systems, when we provide the information to the modalities, we could use a master patient index or a modality as an example can query using one ID and we can respond with a different ID based on the MPI. So we can normalize patient IDs in real time through the broker if that's something that, that is uh, required in the workflow. So I wanna take you a, a look at the actual products here. So I'm gonna show you the actual broker. I'm gonna start with the broker, which is right here in the middle of the screen. Um, so you can see on the left-hand side, I have DICOM information. On the right, I have HL7 information. And as I said before, we support more than just HL7. I'll give you an example of that. If I go into my options in this section here where I configure my AE titles, when you configure an AE title for the broker, you can tell it to use other processes to uh, get its information. So that's where we would configure web services. So I could have additional uh, AE titles in this dropdown. When a modality calls us with that particular AE title, we can trigger some kind of a workflow that maybe calls a web service on another system, or it could generate other types of messages or use other standards like XDSI or uh, CCR and CCD and so forth and so on. So again, the product is really though conceptually designed to bridge between your information systems in the hospital and your clinical systems running uh, on the modalities, which is on the left-hand side in my uh, interface here. So as an example, I, what I did here is I have a fake wrist that we can use to place an order. So here's my wrist over here. And this is not really a core part of the product that we just kind of have a fake wrist here we can use is uh, obviously for a demo, I don't have a, a real wrist laying around that we can use. But this would be this would represent some kind of information system. So let's say I want to put in a new order. So I'm going to put in a new order for John Galt for the, my patient John Galt. So I'm going to select that patient. I'm going to go to new order or new study. Actually, I'm going to have to log in first. So let me log into my little wrist. Select John Galt, new study, and just the basics. And this is just the kind of things that a wrist would normally have, right? So a wrist would normally uh, you know, you would go in and say, I'm ordering a, uh, a CR, for example. So I'll choose uh, computed radiography, and maybe this is a uh, an ankle, and I'll say it's on the left side. Um, no particular reason for the study. I'm going to click update, and that's going to generate an order. So I just generated an order. Let's go and take a look at that order that just got generated. So here's my order. It has uh, today's date. Today is February 1st, 2015. Here's my order for John Galt. Now, if I go and look in my folder where my HL7 messages are stored from this RIS, so here are my HL7 messages, and this right here is the one that was just generated. So let's take a look at that message. So this is what a typical HL7 message is going to look like. Um, and, and this is a very, very basic HL7 message that you see here. Uh, I have a very watered down, just for demonstration purposes, but we've got our patient ID, we've got our patient name, date of birth, sex, what type of study is being ordered. Uh, things of that nature, the modality. So all the basic information would be found here. And again, this is pretty typical for HL7. So in some cases, that HL7 message would get sent to our broker. So here's the broker up here on the upper right-hand side. You can see I've received no messages so far. So I'm going to go over here. I have a little tool that I can use to send HL7. So I'm going to go and find that message. So here's the message that I just generated. I'm going to click the Send button. And you'll see over here that this number is going to increase to one once that message is received. So you can see it incremented by one. So I've received that message. I can verify that I received it. I'm going to go to database procedures and I'm just going to throw everything up here. So 
Um, so here's that ankle that we just ordered from today at uh, 129. Um, so it is in my uh, my system now. And again, this is if the if if you know for HL7 sent to the broker, it would get stored in a local database in order to be provided to the modalities. And of course, this database would be truncated periodically. Uh, you know, old data would be removed. It's you know not very useful after it's already been you know the the exam date's already come and gone. So now that that order is sitting in the broker, waiting for a modality to get the information. So I have down here. This is a simulator for a modality. This is similar to how a modality would query. It uses modality work list. Um, so you can see here work list C find. Uh, it sends a query to the broker. You'll see here I have zero queries that have come into my broker so far. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit the find button. And you can see here I have a query that was run. And if I look in my list, there's the order that I'm looking for, John Galt, you can see here at the bottom. Um, with this little tool, I could also look at the uh, the actual tags that were returned. So here's the actual DICOM tags that were sent in that query response. So we do have quite a bit of troubleshooting tools included with the, uh, with the broker, which are especially helpful for a lot of the non-radiology modalities where things might be non-standard. So that's basically how the broker works. I give you a very basic demonstration of a typical scenario uh, for the broker as far as modality work list goes. But as I said, there are lots of other scenarios such as web services and uh, proprietary web services integrating with master patient indexes and things like that, uh, which I could also talk about. But I just want to give you a basic overview of how the product works. And if you have any questions or want to discuss uh, other, other workflows or more in-depth workflows, by all means, please reach out to us. Thank you.